Happy Friday and welcome to Meet the Press Now. I'm Chuck Todd. It has been, believe it or not, just 17 days since Donald Trump announced officially his 2024 presidential candidacy. And in those 17 days, a lot has happened involving the former president. None of it has been good for him or his campaign. His most buzzworthy event of the last two and a half weeks was a dinner with outspoken anti-Semite Ye, the artist formerly known as Kanye West, and known white supremacist Nick Fuentes. Trump says he did not know Mr. Fuentes' reputation before the dinner, but he did know Kanye's. And since the dinner, Kanye has made even more hateful and ignorant comments, including praising Hitler, which led to his suspension from Elon Musk and Twitter late yesterday. While Trump has not yet condemned Kanye's anti-Semitism, one of his top allies, Kevin McCarthy, told NBC yesterday that all Americans should be doing this. They're disgusting. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Do you think it's incumbent on other Republicans more broadly to call it out? I mean, that's sort of oh, the Not just Republicans, yeah. it should be the entire nation. Mm -hmm. Strategically, if Trump's goal in declaring for the White House early was to consolidate support within the party and clear the primary field, well, by all measures, these first 17 days have been a catastrophic failure on that part. His list of endorsements right now is largely fringe figures within the GOP. The only senator backing his candidacy? Alabama's Tommy Tupperville. And the only member of House leadership is New York's Elise Stefani. And not only has Trump failed to scare off other potential candidates, his position is so weak that some have been emboldened to speak out against him. Even former allies are now highlighting his flaws. First, let me just say that there is no room in the Republican Party for anti-Semitism or white supremacy. And anyone meeting with people advocating that point of view, in my judgment, are highly unlikely to ever be elected president of the United States. The former president, I don't really has a don't I don't see that he has a path, uh, you know, through winning in 24. There's a lot of extremism there as well, just with him as a candidate and as an individual um, uh, in terms of his tone and, and, you know, where a lot of his messaging is and, and what has really surrounded him and kind of co-opted his message at, at this point in terms of what he's about, his brand, if you will. I don't think it's the right brand for America. We have to find people who are putting themselves forward, who have character, commitment and real competence. This will be the call of America. Personality and celebrity just aren't going to get it done. And that was from Donald Trump's CIA director turned Secretary of State making those comments. The backlash from within his party is only part of Trump's weakness right now. There are also growing legal issues. These 17 days since his announcement have seen a special counsel appointed to oversee his myriad of investigations. Actually, that's kind of what the point of his campaign announcement was. He was trying to trigger a delay in these happenings. What he did trigger was a special counsel. The Supreme Court ruled that he had to hand over his tax returns to House Democrats before the House Democrats hand over the gavel. And late yesterday, an appeals court just threw out the special master appointed to go through his Mar-a-Lago documents. So if his early announcement was meant to buy him some time legally, I guess you could say it worked because a special counsel was appointed, but it does seem as if it's not working that well. Folks, we've seen Donald Trump look politically weak before, but this time may be different. Primarily because he's lost the aura of being a winner. He lost the House in 2018. He lost the presidency and the Senate in 2020. And he lost endorsement clout in 2022 when voters rejected a number of his handpicked candidates in key races. In fact, it'll be because of Donald Trump if Democrats actually gain Senate seats after the runoff on Tuesday in Georgia. His presidential campaign, meanwhile, is virtually non-existent. There have been no rallies, no trips to Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, you name it. No discussions with voters yet. Nothing. Instead, he's associated himself with bigots and losers. And a grown chunk of his party seems increasingly tired of his annex. Folks, if this was any other candidate and not a former president, we wouldn't call this candidacy or candidate a contender. We'd call them a gadfly, perennial candidate type of person. To be sure, Trump still has a contingent of diehard supporters. But the question that every single Republican is trying to figure out right now, especially those that want to be president someday, we know who the never Trumpers are. How big is the always Trumper vote? Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.